because this is our first time to try to integrate this device tree into our Android platform. And uh, uh, we have got news that the Ubuntu image already used the device tree, so uh, we would like to know something more, especially how the device tree running in the Ubuntu platform to get the reference to the uh, that device tree works very well on the Android too. And I uh, think there is, a, there is a presentation here. It's really simple. And uh, let's see if it works okay. So, so the first question is what's a device tree? And uh, from the uh, device tree.org uh, website, there is, a, there is a definition here. Device tree is a data structure for describing hardware. So, uh, for some guys who maybe don't have some specific concepts about data structuring, uh, what is a uh, hardware description? I have uh, have an explanation later. And so the first, then the uh, the uh, what's the data structure? Uh, it's quite easy that from the Wikipedia we know in computer science that this structure is a particular way for uh, of storing and organizing data in computers so that can be used efficiently. So we already know a lot of uh, common uh, data structures such like RE or in Python program language in the list and hash table or the dictionary tree or something like that. In the, so uh, the second one is uh, what's the query in hardware, and uh, we know uh, every hardware has its own specification. Uh, so that we know uh, 32 bit CPU or 64 bit CPU in a single or multiple cores in 2 GB RAM or 4 GB RAM. In, uh, in order to uh, run our software well, well on those different hardware, so uh, every software, especially operating system, must know. Uh, all the data, I mean, uh, the specific uh, hardware details during the system boot process, even in the wrong time uh, after system boot up. And uh, so, uh, uh, there is a summary for a directory here. The first is the container with a specific structure to store data, and for the data is all the details of the hardware specification. The data will be put in a specific structure there. Uh, the similar case is XML. Uh, think about that we make more familiar with the XML. That's a, a formatted uh, uh, constructor. In the, uh, you, you you can uh, customize the XML uh, with your own elements, name, or uh, that property, something like that you can store with the data inside the XML. And you can pass it that. The DS3 uh, is pretty similar like that. And uh, here is an example structure of uh, device tree. So I mean, uh, okay, let's just just see that. Uh, the first there is the root uh, node. Uh, this this is only one, uh, and then the second is uh, node one. Node one has some uh, properties below. Uh, for example, a string where uh, list property uh, to describe the, uh, something like that, and. Uh, from every node, uh, you also can add their child's node behind. Uh, and for child's node, you also can uh, add the property as, uh, as their uh, father node or even a uh, high level. And uh, here's the real one device tree configuration file for CPU. Uh, think about you have a multi core where you just have uh, two physical CPUs. And, uh, uh, the first, uh, after the root node, you have to point out its uh, complete ball, or uh, generally uh, for the every uh, word here, uh, we, have, uh, we have a detailed, I mean, uh, uh, we have a detailed uh, how to use it, or the explanation, or the restrictions for what you can write inside. And uh, every word have their its own, uh, I think, its meaning for different platforms. And uh, I didn't read too much about this, so uh, just uh, simple here. And uh, if you want to describe CPUs, uh, uh, this is a general, uh, I think, concept. And after that, you can read the details uh, inside. For example, the first core, the first physical CPU can read compatible is ARM Cortex-A9 
or the second core, the second phys physics CPU, such like that. And not only the CPU, the other devices, uh, such as Ethernet or uh, RAMs or some, uh, you also can add more, uh, I think, uh, more uh, limitations or details, such like which uh, your start point of your memory and which your end point of your memory. You just point them out. Maybe you want to use all memory, but maybe you just want to a part of them and, and uh, reserve some uh, memory for further use or the maybe development or extending. You also can wrap all the things in that device tree itself. Uh, this link include more examples. Actually, it's just a, a kernel of Git and uh, uh, DTS, that's a short word of DOS3. Uh, here is some, some, uh, some details inside. You can go this link to, to learn more. Uh, in that, in that uh, path, there you will find a lot of text based copy files, and then you can open anyone to read their content. And the uh, uh, question is why we need the tree on Android? Uh, the first thing is we can create a single image which can cross uh, SOC hardware. For example, we now have uh, uh, several images for the Panda board, for the Diablo board, for MS53, or even for the Samsung uh, Oregon board. Now, uh, if we use the tree, we uh, probably uh, only need single one image to uh, you just uh, flash that image or SD card <coughs> and put, in, uh, put your SD card in slots of every hardware board and uh, just put it on. And uh, the second point I think is uh, can sim simplify the uh, simplify the customization work. Uh, well, I think about the manufacturer, he, uh, they may want to disable or enable something for the dis uh, different customer maybe marketing or the target program, something like that. And uh, if you, if we, uh, with, without the web tree, if you want to do this, you have to do this uh, before you compile your code. Uh, without the web tree, uh, all the hardware information are hard coded in your uh, C sub code, maybe C++. And uh, if you want to modify something, you have to recompile your whole system. And uh, I don't think it's uh, it's an efficient way to to uh, to the work if you just want to enable or disable some uh, some simple function. And uh, actually, the uh, directory configuration file here is, looks like a switcher, and uh, you don't need to compile the the entire platform of code. Just such like config something, or after that, because the directory will be loaded uh, during the boot process. So uh, the Operating system exactly know what you are want to enable or disable, what you are want to do, and what this hardware exactly is. The second thing is uh, compatible with the different hardware as many possible. Yeah, uh, we uh, we use directory on our known devices, but for those users, or they may have some very strange devices. Maybe they just made them by themselves just for fun. In, in that uh, situation, they don't know. Uh, they don't know the image can work on their hardware. But if we uh, bring the device tree inside the Android system, they at least can see that file. It <coughs> at least can uh, add their hardware specifications inside the, the coffee file by themselves and try that. They don't need to get the, uh, I think, uh, soft code to. Uh, to uh, add those uh, specific uh, hardware uh, information by themselves manually and try it by one by one, maybe lots of comp compiling errors there. So that's a, a little bit risk if you uh, without you actually to do that. I think it's uh, it's a benefit for porting uh, Android image as much as possible, even those unknown software platforms. And uh, uh, about all, uh, just a, a brief in, uh, introduction about the device tree. This and uh, here is my question. Well, uh, it's a little bit more because um, I think this is a little uh, uh, a fresh thing for the Android team. So uh, 
we need to clarify as much as possible uh, details inside. So the first one is who will write the device tree file. So currently we are working processes is involved landing team and our Android team ourselves. And uh, I prefer uh, landing team will write the device tree configuration file because those landing team like ISOC manufacturers know hardware details much more than the Android uh, team uh, team members, for example, maybe kind of work or the Samsung companies uh, guys know uh, exactly know uh, their memories map or their CPU's functionality or something like that. They know what should be added into that configuration files. And uh, uh, for the the non Android team, we actually more focus on the uh, software level and we just let the Android image work well on that. If something wrong in the hardware level, we actually we can dig out, but I don't think it's an efficient way to do by ourselves. 